he made possible loss of altitude for the aircraft, which is not totally abnormal, a thousand meters a minute, uh, roughly. It's quite legitimate. But he had no reason to do so. A priori, he had no reason to stop his captain from returning to the cockpit. That's already quite a lot. He had no reason not to answer the air traffic control, which was telling him about loss of altitude. He had no reason to refuse to uh, uh, put in a code which would make it a priority aircraft compared to all other aircraft in the area. That's a lot. What about the possibility of uh, uh, feeling unwell? A priori, a priori, for the moment, I'm repeating it, it's only 48 hours, it does seem that he was breathing normally. It's not the breathing of somebody who's having a stroke or a heart attack. And he doesn't say anything, not one word. I repeat it, absolute silence. So what about the alarms? Would everybody on board be aware of what was going on, the air hostesses and passengers and so on? It's difficult to answer your question, but within the victims' families, I was asked the same question. I reckon that the victims only became aware of what was going on at the very last moment. Let me finish, because on the tape, uh, well, the sound that we're hearing, the screams are only in the very last moments before impact. Forgive me, it's a somewhat sordid detail. I I've answered, I've answered, but only at the very last moments. Could you say, well, in English, maybe, but I can tr So you're saying, 